In this video, I share my first Tesla autopilot experience and give it some stress tests on some different roads to know and understand its limitations. I'm testing the autopilot feature out on the Tesla Model 3. Just to be clear, I'm just driving with the autopilot that comes standard with every new Tesla and comparing that to my experiences on my open pilot. If you haven't heard anything about OpenPilot before, check out some of my other videos that I've done on the subject. Links in the description below. Here you can see the video topics that we'll cover in this video. Make sure to watch to the end of the video so you don't miss any interesting footage. City driving, highway, road work zone, two-way country road with no separating lane lines. We'll also talk about what happens if you don't pay attention while autopilot is engaged. And finally, I'll summarize my thoughts and opinions. Okay, so here's the first time ever I drove a Tesla Model 3. I'm just waiting for my left turn here. From the car display, you can see the rear view and both left and right side camera views. It's actually really cool. So we take a left turn here, and I'm just gonna fast forward this next part until we get to the first junction. You can see that autopilot is turned on from the blue steering wheel. Okay, so we're getting into the junction now, and you can see how the lines on the road are disappearing. You can see the curb on the left side, and the right lane lines are visible, but autopilot is still engaged, and it had to make a quick correction. So let's fast forward a little bit more until the lane gets wider, and now the lane is really wide. The car is trying to stay in the middle of the lane, which is not really correct. It should stay closer to the right-hand side of its lane, like the car in front of me is currently doing. Now let's fast forward a bit more to another similar road condition, here again, the car is kind of in the middle of the lane, but the left side of the lane should be for cars who are planning to turn left from their side. So it would be better to give them more space and to be on the right-hand side of my lane. And here again, the lane gets wider. There are some temporary road construction signs ahead, and I have to slow down to a stop because of the red light. I did have to make some adjustments here because my car was way too close to these signs. Now, here's another road test. We are cruising on the left lane and we're approaching the bus. In order to overtake the bus, I have to disengage autopilot by taking over the steering wheel. While doing this, normal cruise control stays on. And in order to engage autopilot again, I simply need to move the gear lever twice downwards. The blue flashes that you see from time to time on the screen while autopilot is engaged is a reminder for me to put pressure on the steering wheel so that the system knows that I'm paying attention to the road. Similarly to Kama AI's open pilot, Tesla's autopilot feature drives at a set speed, keeps distance from cars ahead of it by accelerating and braking if needed, and keeps the car centered in its lane. Okay, so here autopilot is still engaged, but we are waiting for a green light. When the green light comes on, the car accelerates all by itself and follows the car ahead of it. Similar to open pilot, autopilot's auto steer works very well in a clearly marked lane. Though, honestly, the fact that Tesla Autopilot requires me to keep my hands on the steering wheel is very annoying. If I compare that to Kama AI's Open Pilot, I can basically drive hands-free on their system, or just rest my hands on the steering wheel, and the camera-based driver monitoring system is checking my eyes and my head position to make sure that I'm alert. Okay, so here we are approaching a stopped car. The car brakes very smoothly, and Autopilot stays engaged while the car stops behind this Peugeot. Without a car in front of me, the base Autopilot feature will not stop for red traffic lights or stop signs. Okay, and the traffic light turns green, and the car accelerates by itself and starts to steer. There are now some clear lane lines, and I need to take over because Autopilot tried to cross into the left lane where there are other cars. So this is another big difference when comparing Tesla's autopilot to Kama AI's open pilot. When driving with open pilot engaged, I can help my car steer and correct here and there, and the software stays in control of my car, which in my opinion, I think is more convenient. Now we are headed to a roundabout, and I just decided to let the Tesla autopilot take whatever lane it wanted to go in. It gets confused and turns too quickly to the right, and then corrects itself back to the left, and then I have to take over. Here's another clip. The road goes pretty hard to the right here, and I set the speed to about 19 mph. The road lines here are pretty clear, and the car does manage to make a pretty decent turn, though I still had my hands ready because I wasn't 100% confident here. But I have to give it to Tesla. It handled this corner really well. Okay, so now to the highway test. 
I set the speed to about 68 miles per hour. The car accelerates to that set speed, and soon we're approaching a slower vehicle. Similar to the in-city test where we overtook the bus, I'll disengage autopilot by forcing it out of its lane, or another way to do this is to simply press on the brake slightly, or to move the gear lever upwards. If this were the Kama AI Open Pilot system, it would disengage if I simply pressed or tapped on any of the pedals. I could also click Cancel from the steering wheel. Now, regarding Tesla's automated lane change, Autopilot needs to have one of the following packages, either full self-driving or enhanced Autopilot. Enhanced Autopilot is not available in North America anymore, but it is an option for European markets. You can choose to have these features installed when you first buy your Tesla, or you can get them later on via a monthly subscription. With the Kama AI Kama 3 Lane Change Assist, it comes standard with OpenPilot. When the user engages the turn signal, a nudge is required on the steering wheel to confirm the lane change, and the car simply changes lanes by itself. With OpenPilot, the driver needs to check to make sure the lane change is safe. Now here, we are approaching the back end of a semi-truck. As you can see from the screen, the car has adjusted the speed to the same speed that the semi is driving. It may be hard to see from the video, but the gap between the semi and the Tesla was very close. And in order to adjust the distance that I was following behind this truck, I had to push the thumb wheel to the left or right. Comparing this experience to Kama AI's Open Pilot, their system automatically adjusts the distance between two vehicles depending on what speed you're driving at in order to keep a safe distance gap between the two vehicles. For some reason, Autopilot didn't engage after several attempts. You can see we're driving on a two-way road, the middle line between the lanes kind of disappeared, and there are cars parked on both sides of the road. On the road up ahead on the right, you can see the Toyota Corolla is leaving its parking space, and Autopilot detects it and is slowing down to let the Toyota complete its turn. It might have slowed down a bit too much, but it's better to be safe. So now the car is accelerating back to its set speed, but there's a bit of a tight space in the road ahead. I was a little bit nervous here, and the car did get pretty close on the right-hand side. Here, I'm attempting to engage autopilot, but again, for some reason, it's not letting me engage. Let's just fast forward through this part. I don't know why it wouldn't let me engage here, but it simply wouldn't. But after autopilot does eventually engage, it does a good job of keeping the car centered in the lane, despite the road work and the signs on the side of the road. And every once in a while, it does want me to tap on the steering wheel to make sure that I'm alert. Now, the car is attempting to follow the road to the left, and it almost hits this sign. Still, it's pretty impressive, considering the last turn. And I stop here under the traffic light. Okay, so here's a road with no lane lines, and again, Autopilot won't engage. So, I try to engage Autopilot when we are halfway at the end of this curve, and then Autopilot kicks in. However, it does cross over the right lane line and asks me to take over. Autopilot is braking the car to stop and activate the hazard lights. So here, I have to put my hands on the steering wheel, take over, and then the hazard lights will automatically switch off. I engage the autopilot feature, and it keeps the car right on the right-hand side of the road. Now here, we are on similar road conditions. It's a two-way road with no middle lane line, and we have several turns in the road. Only, this is a much more windy road. Autopilot is making all of these turns, but it's doing so while driving in the opposite lane on the other side and then back. The car feels kind of unpredictable here, but still manages to make all of the turns. And finally, we're back on a straight road. But even still, the car is all over the place, and it doesn't feel very safe at all. Here, I wanted to disengage Autopilot because there's a biker on the other side of the road coming towards us, and I don't want to take any risks. The car gives me a bit of a warning because I overcorrected over the right-hand line. Okay, now let's test what happens if you don't pay too much attention while driving with Autopilot engaged. Like you saw from all of the previous clips, Autopilot is asking me to add some slight pressure to the steering wheel. If the car doesn't detect hands on the wheel, then a flashing message appears. Repeated failure to respond and put your hands on the wheel gets you an audible alert, and eventually the car will disengage Autopilot. 
If the driver does not respond, then the car will turn on the emergency flashers and stops the car. Also, autopilot cannot be re-engaged without putting the car in park. This is similar to the open pilot system, which requires the car to be completely restarted. Okay, so what are my final thoughts here? Before I knew of the existence of Kama AI and their open pilot software, I religiously followed many Tesla YouTubers and I really liked the autopilot driving assistance that those cars had. I thought they looked really, really good compared to other driver assistance tools in the market. Tesla Autopilot works very good when there are clear road lines in the city and on the highways, and the all-round sensors make driving safe, and it always tries to position the car pretty precisely in the center of its lane. But if you don't have the optional tech packages, you're still going to be missing many cool features. On the other hand, when driving conditions are a little bit less clear, like there are less road lines or you're on a country road, as in many of the video clips here, the car feels pretty unpredictable and the steering wheel is kind of jittery and moves all around, and it just makes me feel kind of unsafe. Still, a pretty interesting experience. That's it for now. See you next time on Let It Drive.